Okay, let's move to argument form number three. And so I'll just write it out, give the example, and then we'll talk about it. So premise one. Let's go back to the falling objects. Oh, so premise one, all observed objects have fallen. Okay, so it's this is starting out like argument form number one did. Premise two, the sample. of observations is representative. I'm just using a abbreviations. Now here's where it starts to get different. We say this is an object where like, let's say we're talking about like this marker or uh, this eraser or something. This is an object, therefore, Probably this object will fall. Okay. Now let's uh, put this into um, an argument form. So, uh, premise one. All observed A's are B's. Premise two, the sample of observations is representative. Premise three, X is an A. What can we conclude? Probably X is a B. Okay, so we can take a step back and reflect on how this is different from argument forms one and two. Argument forms one and two uh, went from a sample of observations to talking about like all objects will probably fall, okay? This one though, there's a, it goes from your observations to a specific thing, like this marker will probably fall, okay? Uh, an example of this would be like the goldfish example. Um, so all observed goldfish died when they ate cut food. The sample of observations was, relative, was representative. The next, gold, the next goldfish, is a goldfish, I guess. So, uh, so probably the next goldfish will die when eating cat food. Okay, so uh, that's kind of how this applies in that example. Okay, one last argument form and we'll be done. 